All right, so last time we left off, we talked about echinoderms, yes? So class character, or phylum characteristics for echinoderms, what are they? Uh, Contamorous symmetry. symmetry, good. Tough skin, Tough skin with spines, good. Uh, uh, Hedgehog, pedicillaria, good. Uh, water vascular system. system. Good, and one last one. Uh, regenerative, regenerative abilities. Okay, okay good job. Okay, so. This time, we're going to go over the different echinoderm classes, and then we're going to talk about form and function in echinoderm, so how they carry out the seven essential functions. Um, so this picture represents the five different classes of echinoderm. Um, you are going to need to know the five different classes of echinoderms and the class characteristics, just like you need to know, need to, need to know it for mollusks and arthropods. Um, so like before, I would suggest that you kind of like make a chart, list it out, all right, which phylum echinodermata, all the characteristics, and then the different classes. Um, but here's your five classes. You've got Ophiuroidea, which are brittle stars, and basket stars, Echinoidea, which are your sea urchins and sand dollars, Asteroidea, which are uh, sea stars, Crinoidea, which are crinoid feather stars, um, and sea lilies, and then Holothuroidea, which are sea cucumbers. Okay, so Ophiuroidea. Ophir means serpent tail. Oidea is animal. Okay, so these are the serpent tailed animals. So they get their name because their arms are long and skinny and look like a snake. Okay, um, types of things that you'd find in here are brittle stars and basket stars. Here's a couple pictures so that you can see this. So here on the left, that's your brittle star. Okay, and so you can see like this long, skinny arm that looks kind of like a snake. Um, and the central disc of that animal is very, very well defined, okay? So the central disc is the center portion of the animal, and you can see right here on this brittle star where the central disc uh, ends and where the arms start. So the central disc is very well defined, long, skinny, serpent-like arms. Those arms um, can also be dropped very easily to distract predators. So if something's trying to eat that brittle star, that brittle star can drop an arm, and that arm will actually like move. Okay, keep moving once it's been dropped, um, in order to and you know help out with the name serpent um, tails and um, get it. Allow for that arm to get eaten. Allow for the brittle star to get away. No big deal for the brittle star because they can grow it back, right? Because they can regenerate that arm. Um, they can be suspension or deposit feeders. So they're either going to be like walking around, picking stuff up off the bottom, and eating food. Um, that way, or they're going to be um, like basket stars here on the right. They're going to be putting their arms up into the water and capturing food and then bringing it down to their mouth. So this is what a basket star looks like here. Um, the basket star does still have pentamerous symmetry, even though it looks like um, basket stars have pentamerous symmetry. So here's your central disc, and then you can see the five arms that come off, um, and then those branch a lot. Okay, but they still have the pentamerous symmetry. Okay, um, echinoidea. Echino means hedgehog, so these are the hedgehog-skinned animals. Um, and they have very, very obvious spines. So these are going to be things like sea urchins and sand dollars and heart urchins. Right? Um, sea urchins, sand dollars, and heart urchins. Characteristics of this class, their shape is going to be much more rounded. Okay? Um, Except for like sand dollars, they're going to be more disc shaped, but rounded or disc shaped is what they're going to be like. Um, their spines are very obvious. If you look at a sea urchin, I mean, it's kind of hard to miss the spine. Um, and then they have a special mouth part that's called Aristotle's lantern. And um, they have five teeth. Yeah. So if you look at the underside of an urchin, you'll see there's five teeth. And then inside of that urchin, they actually have um, like this whole complex structure that they use in order to um, like manipulate those five teeth. And it's called Aristotle's lantern, okay? And it's, it's really cool. Um, I'll show you a picture in just a second. So mouth part made of five teeth. They're herbivores. They like to eat kelp. Kelp's their favorite thing to eat, particularly like urchins love kelp. Um, and so they will move around, use those little five teeth to chew on the kelp. Um, if there is no kelp or algae nearby, they will become detritivores and eat whatever they can find that's dead. Okay, so here's some pictures. Urchins, live urchins, uh, sand dollars, 
Okay, so these two pictures are sand dollars. Um, did you guys see the live sand dollars at the aquarium? Okay, they actually had like a whole tank that was full of live sand dollars. They kind of looked like rocks, yeah. But sometimes they like stand vertically. Can you see that? Some of them were vertical in the water or on the dirt um, to help to capture food. Uh, this is a heart urchin. Okay, can you guess why it's called a heart urchin? It's shaped kind of like a heart, yeah. Um, and then here's Aristotle's lantern. So this picture right here, this is the teeth of the urchin that, un like if you looked at the urchin on underneath, that's what you would see. And then the teeth would be down here. This whole thing right here, that's the structure that's actually up inside of the urchin. So there's all sorts of muscles here, and those are used to manipulate those five teeth to chew on algae, basically. And then the esophagus would run through the hole in the center, up into the stomach of the urchin. Kind of cool, huh? Okay. Okay, um, asteroidia, aster means star. So these are the star animals. These are sea stars. All right, characteristics of this class, they do have tough skin. Um, their spines are going to be short, okay, pretty short. Um, and actually it may look like they don't have spines for some types of sea stars, but they do. They'll just be kind of more internal. They'll just maybe look a little bit more bumpy, okay? Um, their arms are very, very thick and it's hard to determine the central disc. So if you look at this picture right here on the left, their arms are much thicker than the brittle star, right? Um, and it's hard to tell where that central disc starts and ends in comparison to the arms, yeah? Okay, so feeding in sea stars is kind of interesting and different. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, sea stars are carnivores. Um, for the most part. So they'll walk around and they, they really, really, really like to eat bivalves. So things like mussels, scallops, oysters, okay, clams, that sort of thing. Um, so they're going to eat all sorts of stuff like that. They can also be scavengers, so they'll eat like dead fish and stuff like that. But mostly they're going to be eating bivalves. Um, and they have a very interesting way of eating bivalves. Um, so how many of you have ever found like a clam, a live clam or something like that at the beach. Okay, and have you ever tried to open it? Yeah, yeah it's really hard, right? Um, it's like that clam, that little clam is super like suctioned together, right? And it, you can try and get your nail in there and like kind of pry it open, but it's really, really, really hard to get open. Um, but sea stars are actually able to eat these guys. And so in order to eat them, they have to get those two shells open, right? In order to be able to get inside to the good part inside. So what they do is the sea star will actually find their little clam or whatever, uh, muscle. Um, and once they find that little muscle, they kind of wrap their body around that muscle. Uh, and they have two feet with little suction cups on the end. And so they'll suction to the either side of the shell and then they start to pull, okay? And so they're sitting there like pulling on this clam. Um, it's hard, right? So they're like pulling super hard and the clam is like trying to stay closed so that the sea star can't get into it um, and eat it. Um, and they've actually got these two muscles, which on your coloring worksheet you should see, the adductor muscles. Okay, so those they use to like close themselves. So sea star's pulling, clam's trying to stay closed. What happens eventually if you like are super, super like, if you're using your muscles like a lot, what happens to them? Say what? They cramp, they get tired, right? And so um, eventually the clam, its muscles get tired, and so that little shell opens just a little bit, right? Just like a little tiny sliver, um, that shell will, will open. And that's all the sea star needs, okay? Once that little shell opens just a little tiny bit, the sea star actually takes its stomach, one of its two stomachs, and actually spits it out of its mouth, okay, into the shells of the clam. Okay, so it like takes it out and sticks it into the shells of the clam, digests the clam while it's still inside the shell, and it slurps up all of the now liquefied clam and then sucks that stomach back into its body. Yeah. So, yeah, it's weird. They stick their stomach out to digest their food and then pull it in um, when it's done. <laughs> well, they don't digest the pearl, so it was if they're eating an oyster. So here, this left, this picture on the left right here, this is actually a um, muscle in the grips of a sea star. If you find a sea star that's kind of like all wrapped around something, it's probably wrapped around a muscle or a bivalve. 
This right here on the right is actually a picture from inside a bivalve. So they put like a camera inside a bivalve and then fed it to a sea star and watched and took recordings of what happened. I'm going to show that to you now. Okay, holothuroidea. Holother means animal resembling a plant. So these are the animals that resemble plants, which they do. They resemble the plant, the cucumber. They are sea cucumbers. Okay, characteristics of this class. Their skin is very leather-like. Um, their spines are maybe internal, okay? But the, their body wall on the outside may have external bumps that you're able to see. Uh, so their spines are not as obvious. Their body shape is elongated. So if you m imagine taking like a sea star, okay, and then kind of like stretching it out this way, okay, that's kind of what a, a sea cucumber is. All right, so here's my little sea star. So take this and add some like tissue in between each of these, right, and then stretch it out this way. You've got a sea cucumber. All right, does that make sense? So they still have the pentamerous pentaradial symmetry. Um, it's just their body is elongated. So if you look at them like from one end, that's the way that they would have that pentaradial symmetry. Okay, so they do have pentaradial symmetry. They're feeding. Um, they can be either deposit or suspension feeders. So if they're suspension feeders, they're actually going to have oral tentacles, um, which are modified tube feet that they will use to like stick into the water and capture food. Um, if they're deposit feeders, they're going to be moving along on the bottom and eating dirt and digesting all that organic matter and then pooping out the sand. Okay, so they're going to be deposit feeders. Um, evisceration is their defense mechanism. So this is weird and crazy. So their defense mechanism, um, when they feel threatened by a predator, is to vomit up their internal organs. It's called evisceration. Um, and Basically, when they feel threatened by a predator, they vomit their internal organs up, and the internal organs are sticky, and they taste bad. And so they essentially entangle the predator, and um, they taste bad, so the predator tastes that and is all like kind of caught up in these internal organs, and so the predator can't get the sea cucumber, and then they think that the sea cucumber tastes bad because their internal organs taste bad. So that is their defense mechanism. Um, you do have some kinds of sea cucumbers that actually eviscerate every year. So just like once a year they decide that they're going to vomit up their internal organs. Um, we think probably to try and get rid of any sort of like internal parasites that they might have. Okay. They rely on stored energy while they grow new internal organs. It can take um, a while, like a month couple months, maybe longer, just depends. Um, if you find a sea cucumber like at the beach, you can probably make it eviscerate, but don't because, because it takes a lot of energy for them to regrow those internal organs. Um, and so, and then if they actually encounter a real predator that would actually harm them, they don't have that defense mechanism, right, while they're regrowing those internal organs. So don't do it. Be nice to sea cucumbers. Don't make them eviscerate. All right. Okay, crinoidea. These are sea lilies. Okay, um, and feather stars. These guys are kind of cool. Um, they are characterized by long, feathery arms, um, and they are suspension feeders. So here's two pictures. So a feather star is the one on the left, and a sea lily is the one on the right. Sea lilies tend to be deep sea, um, and they perch themselves on outcroppings of rocks underneath the ocean in areas where there are like good currents. And as the currents pass by, all sorts of different things are caught in the current and they pass through these arms and they get stuck in the arms and the sea lily will then take and like pull its arm up to its mouth and eat all of the stuff that's in the water. So they're suspension feeders. Um, feather stars live a lot of times on coral reefs and so at nighttime they'll actually crawl up onto the reef um, and then extend all of these arms into the water to feed. So they're suspension feeders as well. So they're pretty cool. And it's weird, you can see, like, they can swim, but it's like super weird. They use their arms and they're like moving all over the place. It's crazy. Uh, 